Hey cats, Edbud here and welcome to the channel. Three Stripe fans and running shoe enthusiasts, this is an episode for you. An initial review of the highly anticipated Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. Let's get to the shoe. So this new version weighs in about four grams lighter than the original. I can feel it. Really, I can. So in my UK size 11 and a half, US size 12, this one comes in at 271 grams, which is 9.6 ounces. The V1 was about 275 grams, 9.7 ounces in the same size, but much has changed. This new version looks a hell of a lot lower to the ground, but it is in fact the same 42 millimeters in heel stack as the V1, at least in my size anyway. That V1 did have an overlap around the heel section, leading through to the midfoot. That foam was kind of cupping around your foot. Not so in the V2, less foam here, but that means there's slightly more weight to be used in other places. Big dough of 180 earth credits though. This is a shoe I've bought with my own cash, Nobody sent it to me. I don't think Adidas send out all that many shoes. So must be noted that the V1 was about 170 earth credits, so we got a 10 pound additional charge. Thanks Adidas. We'll start with the upper first. So an initial seven mile run here, 11.3 kilometers, an alternating effort type run. It was supposed to be easy effort, and then half marathon paced effort, but I just ended up running relatively fast the whole way. So yeah, well done, Ed. Control, control, I must learn control. Someday. The upper here in the V2 is much lighter and more flexible than the first version of the Adios Pro. In fact, I would suggest it is sublime. It's like one of those driving gloves that you put on. That's kind of what it feels like wearing this shoe. You feel like a chauffeur. In fact, it's very close to the upper that's used on the Takumi Sen 7. It's majestic. Now, some people are saying that the upper here feels a little narrower than the first version. Feels perhaps a little more roomy in the toe box. I think that's down to the actual materials themselves. It was quite containing the V1 and is a similar feeling here, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as present around the foot. And that's a good thing because there was a lot of upper on the first one. I think it's more down to the mesh material here. It's just super flexible. So the tongue doesn't have quite as much padding going down through it as on the V1, but it's not too much of an issue. It does have padding, but just in the right places. They've minimized it a little bit. It must be taken into account here that the tongue isn't gusseted like it was in the V1. It's just stitched into place on a couple of sections either side of the shoe. That seems enough just to hold the tongue in a centralized position. It certainly feels less bulky on foot due to that new upper mesh material, which means the extra weight that you've saved can be utilized in the heel counter area. Certainly more rigid this time, look at that, but still thin and containing. The triumph here though is hidden inside with this very coarse material that's used on the heel padding. Those very coarse padded strips there kind of grip your sock like lockdown leeches. Feels a little bit like Velcro, actually. I know that might not sound nice, but it does the trick, I'm telling you. It sort of grips, but only in one direction. And a superb lock around the heel there. No heel slip whatsoever. For once, perfect lace length. Absolutely perfect. We must savour this moment. Perfect lace length, yes. Adidas, the people that design this shoe, give them a pay rise. A small cake, maybe, to congratulate them or a little badge saying did good i think the length here is pretty much standard for an adidas shoe i've seen a few people say that they run a little long i don't really think that's the case pretty much as true to size for an adidas shoe as you're gonna get i had zero change in terms of the lockdown on my first run i just tied the laces up and ran and i didn't have to worry about it and that was refreshing just feels like it was made for my foot only improvements here, no drawbacks. I'm not scared to give this a three out of three for the upper. If you're enjoying the video today, guys, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch more running shoe content for you. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. So with the midsole, they've got the old carving knife out and slashed away at the Light Strike Pro. They've carved some foam out the top of the midsole, just here to allow a bit of additional squash and around the midfoot area there to expose the energy rods. Can you hear them? 
no, neither can I. It does remind me a little bit this whole thing of carving out some of the midsole foam of the Air Jordan series, you know, the three, four, five, and six, or maybe even the Air Max as well, where Tinker Hatfield decided to, you know, cut out a section there like a window to show you the inner workings of the shoe. I like it. I'm sure Nike will be very upset that Adidas have done this. I kind of like the idea of them sitting there going, really? We did that first. We did it first. Certainly a less boxy and more streamlined approach to the Adios Pro 2. So still with the great feel of the V1 underfoot, but a much smoother ride. There's just a little bit less there. And that was a good thing. Not quite as firm, a little bit more give in the midfoot area. And hitting my half marathon pace goal time on those faster miles to the second every time. I think that says a lot. That was exceptionally impressive as well due to the fact I was running on some tired legs after a longer run and a bigger mileage in the last week as well. My watch was barking at me to take a rest day and I just said, nah, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. 16 mile an hour winds, some rain and just dismal skies. Those things did nothing to wipe the smile off my face whilst running in the Adios Pro 2. It was really enjoyable. The midsole refinements here work superbly well and Adidas have even put some holes into the insole to further lighten the shoe. You guys will know my 10K and a half marathon personal bests were both in the Adios Pro 1 and I see no reason why the version 2 couldn't help me improve upon those times as well. One little worry there in exposing the energy rods, I wonder whether moisture will be able to get into the foam perhaps? I'm not sure if that's a thing you would be worried about but you know in the UK there's a lot of rain so I just worry that the moisture might be able to get in there and perhaps do something to the foam. Maybe it'll damage its longevity. Hope you can see where I'm coming from there. Cruising at 6 minutes 51 per mile isn't an easy thing to do, but it did feel quite effortless in the Adios Pro 2 today. I'm going to give this one a 2.8 out of 3 for the midsole after my initial run. Outsole now. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, guys, I'm telling you. It really is. Just small refinements again here in the outsole that really make a difference. On the wet road, the concrete and the gravel, like a honey-covered Velcro high rebound ball, hit by McEnroe with vicious vengeance after a bad umpire's call. The rubber's got an almost F1 tire type feel to it. It really is something to behold. You can even feel it gripping your finger as you sort of Rub it down there, like it's, it's really something. It doesn't look like it's gonna grip that well, but it really does. I wonder what they put in there. It's magic. Very slight updates here then in the rubber on the midfoot to the forefoot. You've got the rubber giving way to this area in the toe off section of the shoe, which is a little smoother and a little thicker as well to boot. So maybe Adidas would put that in just to improve the longevity of the outsole a touch. Two strips of rubber here, as per usual in all super shoes, that's a, a given, you have to have that. If you don't put them in there, then it's just not cricket. One important thing to note here is that the heel section of the shoe is very slightly wider. It does make a little difference there in the stability in the rear of the shoe. Yeah, I've been chucking it down for like a day or something here in Yeovil, but it may as well have been bone dry. That's what it felt like. It was really assured underfoot. And you know the other day how I am worried about that a little bit. It's in my mind, you know, from going flying while testing out the RC Elite 2. No signs of any slipping or sliding. It's a right ripper of an outsole. And of course you've got these little holes that Adidas have put in everything to lessen the weight, maybe to improve the grip a touch more. Even on gravel, actually, the softer rubber held up really well. Very promising improvements here. Subtle, but welcome. I'm gonna give this a 2.8 out of three after my initial runs for the outsell. Talk value now. So, touch more expensive, actually. They've added on 10 Earth credits. You naughty people, Adidas, you devils. I would suggest it's not really a daily shoe as such. If you want a daily offering from Adidas, go for that Adios 6. But I think that that shoe could be quite a good partner for this one. A race level cruiser for me, like a Millennium Falcon. Once you get the groove, you can just lock into that rhythm and the miles just drift by. Like you're listening to Donovan. I mean the guy from the 60s, not Jason Donovan. I think if the first version worked for you, then number two will 
do you proud? But I do have to stress that the first version grew on me over time. Out the box, I hated it. We just couldn't get on, but after a few runs, I understood it and I grew to love it. And it was probably my favorite super shoe yet, actually. I really do like the V1. This one's just so much sleeker though and has all the things that the V1 does, but more, more. So still 30 Earth credits, cheaper than the next percent, 10 less than the Endorphin Pro 2. So a little closer. And there's infinitely more grip here than the Liberace of running shoes, the RC Elite 2. I gotta say, it is well crafted. There's no like glue marks or anything like that. It does feel like you've got a really nice, well designed and well put together shoe. And that makes the whole experience a little bit nicer. Don't be put off by the weight. It's a refined and very well designed effort. The three stripe shoe masters know what they're doing. I'll give this one a 2.7 out of three for value because I'm still not sure if that's going to be a problem having these exposed rods. I'm really worried about that. And of course, it's a very expensive shoe as well. Not everybody's going to want to fork out that sort of dough. And I fully respect that if I've calculated correctly. That gives us 11.3 out of 12 for the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. Hey cats, have you picked this one up? Is it one you're looking to introduce to your running shoe rotation? Let me know your vibes on this one down in the comments. A film recommendation today. Gotta to switch things up from time to time. You guys may know that I've talked in the past about how much I love the Marvel Universe or Multiverse or whatever it's called these days. I've been watching Loki and really enjoying that so far. Really like the vibes. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that album that the Arctic Monkeys released a couple of years back. It's got that whole space age sort of 70s style. It reminds me though of my favorite films that I've watched throughout the Marvel kind of universe, throughout all the series. One of my favorites will always be the Captain America film, the very first one. I love the whole setting of that. I love his character as well. He's just such a likable character, Captain America. Very selfless sort of person. And I think it's got one of the strongest stories actually of some of the Marvel films. Some of them are wild and wacky. And you have to really concentrate very hard to kind of take it all in. But I think Captain America just stands out there as one of those great films. No matter how many times you watch it, it's just still really enjoyable. He's kind of dead set on making sure he's trying to keep people safe. And I know further down the line, Tony Stark's trying to do that in his own way, but obviously they meet in the middle at some point. <laughs> but yeah, do go and check that out. If you haven't seen those early Marvel films, I think they're superb. Captain America. Thanks for tuning in for today's review. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you. And it really does help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.